Hi, my name is Matt Cox, and I'm a con man. I was recently released from federal prison. I did 12 and a half years for bilking financial institutions out of between 15 to 55 million dollars, depending on which law enforcement agency you believe. I've had like 25, 26 driver's licenses, a couple dozen passports, been in and out of the country as different people, and I'm I led the, uh, you know what, I led the FBI and Secret Service on a three-year manhunt. I was number one of the Secret Service's most wanted list, but I'm all better now. No, I was recently released from federal prison, and today I'm reviewing the movie Matchstick Men. So the uh, basic uh, storyline in the movie is it's about a con man. It was about a couple con men. And one of them is named Roy Waller, and it's, he's played by Nicolas Cage. And the other one is Frank Mercer, and he's played by Sam Rockwell. And uh, basically, they're two con men, and they, they do what's called uh, short cons, where it's cons that can be done they're not, not for a lot of money, but they're quick cons where you get in and you get, you get out and within a few hours you've got a few thousand dollars and you're, you're on your way. And they're low risk and uh, as opposed to a, a long con, which is a bigger gain, but of course it, it takes a much longer time. So, that's, uh, so we're going to watch uh, clip one right now. By the Waterson 2000 water filtration system, the prize gets recorded as a sales expense, and you don't pay any tax. Good deal, huh? Yeah. yeah. God, I've met so many guys just like You're this. You're guaranteed one of those up. three prizes. I'm going to have a courier come to your house. You're going to give him a check. He's going to come to me, and then we'll decide which one of those prizes you get. You see how that works? $398 even. Can I help you? Carolyn Schaefer? Yes. I'm Agent Kellaway. This is Agent Cole. We're from the Federal Trade Commission. Sorry to disturb you. We'd like to ask you a few questions if we could. Is everything all right? I'm sorry to tell you that you've been the victim of fraud. Unless, unless what? Well, a lot of these whack jobs, they work in syndicates. If they'd cast your check out of state, then it's federal and we can act. But we would need a signed clearance from you for your bank. To I love this part. Showing up at the house, well, telling them that you're helping them out. It just grapes. completely eliminates. All right, so basically what we just watched was, it, it's their everyday life. It's, it's just what they do on day in and day out. They run short scams. They call you up. Then they go, I love the, the, the twist on it is instead of just the basic scam of calling you up and scamming you for a couple hundred bucks, they come in and, and reveal the scam and then they end up convincing them to sign a document that allows them to empty out their bank account. I mean, it's really perfect. It's like if you have the guts to walk in and flash a badge and tell them, hey, I'm with the federal government, and who's going to call? So anyway, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great clip. And, and I've met just... Man, I met so many guys just like this that would just be amazing on the phone, talk into anything. So anyway, it's a great, it's a great clip. So this is the next one, which is uh, the reason I like this clip is because it, he's clearly got some mental issues. I mean, most con men, when you meet them and you spend any significant amount of time with them, they have mental issues. They've got narcissism, they've got depression, they've got extreme anxiety, and that's what's great about this entire movie is that he, it shows how truly fucked up this guy is. He really has some issues. So this is a, and this is a great, this is a great clip. Look, Doc, I spent last Tuesday watching fibers on my carpet. Do you see you The whole time I was watching my carpet, I was worrying that I, I might vomit. And the whole time I was thinking, I'm a grown man. I should know what goes on in my head. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I should just blow my brains out and end it all. But then I thought, when I, well, if I thought more about blowing my brains out, I started worrying about what that was going to do to my goddamn carpet. Okay? So, <laughs> that was a good day, Doc. And, and I just want you to give me some pills and let me get on with my life. That's fucking great. It's, it's great because, uh, like, before, before I was incarcerated for about, about 10, 15 years, I was on, uh, 
I was on a, a drug called Paxil for uh, social anxiety and depression. And then when I went to prison, they took me off of it. So they tried to put me on like a cheaper brand like Wellbutrin or these other drugs. And they just didn't work for me. They work for some people, love them, and, and they're great. And they didn't work for me. So eventually I ended up going, okay, this isn't, this isn't helping me at all. I felt like I was in a fog. So I started just dealing with the depression. And you start talking your, I started talking my way through, you ever heard me say this? Through the fucking day. And it was like, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd just be completely fucking depressed. I had 26 years to go. It was just a horrible situation. And I would start thinking, I'd be laying there in bed and I'd start thinking, how much dental floss do I have to fucking buy at the commissary so that I can weave a rope to hang myself at two o'clock in the morning in the bathroom? And so, you know, even though I knew that was, I'm telling myself that's not that's not normal. You're, 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 it's just anxiety. It's depression. Just it's okay. I would talk myself out of bed, get some coffee. You like coffee? Uh, it'll be okay. I get some coffee. Then I would say, wait a second. Uh, uh, you know, uh, okay. I, let me let me get to the library. If I just get to the library, I'll be okay. So I'd start talking my way through the day. And by the time I got to the library, I was feeling a little bit better. Then by noon, I was going this isn't so bad, it's going to be okay. And then by five o'clock, I was saying, this is good, I'm good, I'm all right. I, I, got, I got a 2255, I got a, I got a motion in the courts, I'm going to get my sentence reduced, they can't keep me here. And then I would start saying, hey, I'm writing all these stories, I got a bunch of, I'm, I'm, I'm in prison, yeah, but there's a good group of guys, I got some good friends. And then by seven o'clock, I'd be like, you know, this is, this is good, I'm getting out of prison, this is going to be okay, no big deal. By nine o'clock, I was taking over the fucking world. I was gonna get out. I was gonna get all my fucking stories made into fucking movies. It was gonna be amazing. This was the best experience I ever had and I was gonna look back on this and it was gonna be phenomenal. And I would go to bed on top of the world, in prison, and I'd wake up the next morning and I'd think, how much dental floss do I have to buy at the commissary to hang myself? And this went on for a decade and it's just, a little better now. Anyway, um, yeah, still no medication. So anyway, my point is, is that I love this fucking, uh, I love this clip because he's so fucked up. So this is the next clip. And uh, this is basically where they start preparing for the long con. He's gonna go, they're gonna go from short cons to long cons. Hey, this is Matt Cox. I hope you're enjoying the video. Wanted to let you guys know real quick that one of the ways I, I pay my bills is I do paintings. My paintings range anywhere from 800 bucks to a couple thousand, but I also have smaller paintings that I sell for $295 and that includes shipping. And I've got Marilyn Monroe, Bubblegum Girl, Biggie Smalls. I've even got some Trumps. I'm gonna leave my information in the description box and enjoy the rest of the video. real money, Roy. It's real money, it's long con. I don't do long con. Huh? Well, you haven't done it lately. Without me, Frank, how much you think we can take that guy for? Chuck, with the boat. Are you serious? I figure I owe you one. Oh, man, that's great. Hey, Bob. Hey, Chuck. I didn't know you were here. Hey, uh, Chuck, Chuck for shit. This is Arden. Hiya. Um, Ella is perfectly hey, orchestrated. Uh, hey, come on. One, two, three. I wish you could have been there. I reeled him in there. Hallelujah. You got a chick in there? What are you doing? What are you doing? What's the hubbub? Just the second you left the place, he was off his bar stool. He's in there. <laughs> anyway, to the business at hand. To the business at hand. I have one rule, Chuck. Simple is safe. I'm going to tell you as little as possible about me and what I do, but as much as I need to, to make you comfortable with what we're doing. What are we doing? Five thousand pounds sterling. One of the perks of working in the exchange program in a bank. Who did it? No one's in particular, just a little money unaccounted for, floating on top of the books like a layer of cream. And he just scoops it off. Well, it's a little more... <laughs> it's a little more complicated than that, but again, simple is safe. Why not keep the money yourself? As a bank employee, any attempt I make to change currency is recorded and questioned. Bob has a, has a record. You, on the other hand, no one bats This is long. Now, this is your fault. 
Five grand American. This is way too long. Congratulations. At today's exchange rate, you just made two thousand five hundred and sixty-seven dollars. Let me ask you something, Arthur. How much could you do this for, hypothetically? Well, as a rule, we never go north. Why doesn't he want to do long cons? How much could you get your hands on? It's just more dangerous. Uh, Roy doesn't want to do long cons because. I, you know, there's there's just a better chance that you're going to get caught. You have to set up someplace. Uh, typically, the long con is, is there's a fixed location. Uh, people know where you are constantly. It's it, it's an issue, you know. And and he's not interested in that. He wants to get in and get out. He wants to be safe. He doesn't want to get pinched. You know, he doesn't want to do any fucking prison time. You get pinched for something small. Like you steal two grand from somebody. You're not going to prison. I'm gonna pay it back. I'm gonna years probation, and I'm fine. You steal two million from a guy, you're you're gonna do some fucking time, you know. You uh uh. I remember being locked up with this guy that was bitching and moaning about fucking stealing like three or four million dollars and getting like four years, five years. I was like, you stole four fucking million dollars. You got to do some time. You weren't thinking about that when you were stealing that fucking money, were you? So anyway, um. So yeah, he's, but he's, he's smart. He's like, look, I can get in, I can get out. It's not a lot of money. Nobody's getting crushed. I'm not stealing anybody's life savings. It's easy to justify going to someone's house and pretending to be a, general, a contractor, which in the book, in the book, that's what they do. Uh, in the book, they, they, this scam that they're running, it's actually different. What they do is they, they have like a truck. I th I'm pretty sure it's the same book. Yeah, they, they alter it and they actually go around and they pretend to be like general contractors and they're giving away like free... Um, uh, free uh, roof inspections or something. And so they inspect your roof and they poke holes in the fucking roof. And then they, co they, give, they say, yeah, you might be okay. There, you do, there is some damage up there, this and that, but you'll probably be all right. They give them a price, they give them a card and tell them we got a good deal going right now. And then they just wait. They list all the houses that they went to and they wait for it to rain. Of course, the next day, these people have fucking leaks. So they go and they start getting phone calls. They come in, they go, fuck, we got a bunch of, we got a bunch of uh, customers and they start taking deposits. Give me a thousand dollars and I'll get the stuff and drop it off here. And you give me a thousand, you give me a thousand, you give me a thousand. Next thing you know, they've got, in a day, they've raked in 10, 15 grand, a thousand dollars from everybody and they just disappear. So you made $15,000, it only takes a week. It rains in Florida every few days, you know? So I know it's fucking horrible, it's horrible. I feel bad. But the point is that's a short con and there's very little likelihood that they get caught. It's very little money. And if they do, there's not a huge, it's not a, not a huge uh, um, penalty. This is the next scene. Okay. Uh, this is... <laughs> wait, wait, say that again, sorry. Yeah. Okay, this is the next scene. Uh, hello, uh, this is... <laughs> Well, you know, we fought a lot. That what? Uh, no, what do you got? I, I, I wasn't sober a lot. Uh, I you know. So some nights she just didn't come home. Uh, she was pregnant two months before she even told me about it. Is that how you ended up a criminal? I'll take a It's okay, you know. Whatever you do, everybody's done something bad in their life. Uh... I'm in antiques. If you make it a career, it's just a bunch of something strung together. You said you were a bad guy. You don't seem like a bad guy. That's what makes me good at. Yeah, basically, uh, it's just in the storyline, he's got a daughter that comes out of nowhere. Like he knows he was dating a woman and she was pregnant and he left her and then suddenly the daughter is there and he's got this daughter and he gets attached to her and she's just adorable. And she's kind of like a fly in the ointment. So she's, she's always around now. And, and it, it's, it's, a, it's just a super, um, it just makes him very human. But anyway, uh, you got to watch the next clip. It's, 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 a, it's good. It's a good movie. I just can't. I can't do this. There's no time. I can't even take you home. Do you want me to take the bus? No, no. Shit. Is it a job? Can I help? So he's in a spot where he's, he can't take, he's got to take his daughter with him on the long con that they're running. You know what to do, right? Mm -hmm. Just keep real far away from this. If anything goes off, you get out of there. Yeah. That's 
like a lot less than I thought. It always does. It always does. Sorry. So they use her in the con. She's the distraction. You totally missed the whole section, by the way. Take it to the Caymans, okay? <laughs> We're not on the books. We're safe. No, we are. What about her? All right. So, in the what we didn't see is uh, yeah. There's a remember when the the father or, or remember the the uh, the Mark. He fi he figures it out and he he comes and runs after him and chases after him. Jumps on the car. That's gone. You didn't you didn't put that in there. It, it was in there. I'm, I, I'm sure it's been there. I'm going well, back and checking. I'll, I will. I will check. All right. So, I but I already know I'm right. So the point is, is uh, turns out that the girl, I mean, basically it's like a classic con right now that's actually occurring on Roy. So what happens is you get something called the blow off. At some point, once you've taken their money, you get something called the blow off where you now have to get rid of the mark, right? So how do you get rid of the mark? How do you get the mark? How do I steal from someone and get them to want to leave? Well, it's called, that's what it's called, the blow off. And um, back when there was a, there was a, a large um, grifter group that used to, back in the, in the uh, 1920s, they actually went from city to city and they ran this particular scam, which is what most of these movies are based off of. And what ends up happening is they had a scam where they would lure you in, they take your, they bilk you out of a bunch of money, and then they give you what's called the blow off. And uh, this, that's typically what's about to happen right now. Frank, get back. Hello, Roy. Hi, sunshine. Go, go wait in your room, honey. How'd you find me? I did. I found her in black and white. Airport security cameras, Roy. They got a nice look at it. That was sloppy. The dog. Stop. Let her get it. You stay here with me. He wants his money back. Run, Angela! Run! You're running! Daddy's dead and I'm here right now! No, Angela. No, put the gun down, sweetheart. Yeah. Quiet, Frank. Angela, okay. Angela, Angela, put it down, sweetheart. Hey, don't, I'll take care of this. I want you to go. Angela, use that thing, sweetie. I'll do it. Don't, don't make it work. Shoot him. Okay, God damn it, shoot him. No, no, no. Okay, okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. So he's going to clean up the body. That's it. So what's happening is the blow off should be, you know, you should fake that they fake like a typically they'll fake some kind of a a murder or something like that and they involve the mark in it and now the mark just wants to leave town and get away from the whole thing he, he doesn't care about losing his 200,000 or his half a million or whatever he lost he just wants to leave and be he doesn't want to end up in prison well if you notice the mark isn't is the one who ends up getting killed so if you follow any of these types of movies or, or these types of scams, you realize does it doesn't make sense. It should have been like the little girl getting killed or it should have been, um, uh, what's, his, uh, what's the other guy? Um, what are the other guy's fucking name is? Frank, it should have been Frank. Frank should have got shot. Somebody else should have got, and then the Mark should have been like, fuck it, I'm, I'm out of here, keep my fucking money. Because that's typically what happens. 
but instead the market shot. And that's what, so that's where you start to realize something's not right. And this is the next clip. Roy thinks his daughter just murdered somebody. Five minutes. What killed somebody? She technically didn't murder him. I think it was justifiable homicide. Yeah. Maybe manslaughter. She got like seven years. Juvie, she don't probably only in a couple of years. What's happening is the daughter, they tell him the daughter's in trouble. They need money to get her out of trouble. You know, get a lawyer, the whole thing. He wakes up in the hospital alone, wanders out of the room. And well, no, I told her I'm a psychiatrist, they can't lie, Roy. This is the reveal. All his money's gone. If it makes any difference, you're the best I ever saw. I'd never find a better partner. And now I won't have to. I love you, man. Frank. The money in the and the dog is gone. The money in the safety deposit box is gone. He leaves them again. He does leave them a, a, probably yes. what? Probably a thousand bucks. He goes to find his daughter. Goes to the ex house. What? Roy, what are you talking about? The baby. You were gonna have a baby. That's that's why you're here. You, you were pregnant. You were pregnant. You were you were pregnant. I lost it. Yes, fucking. That's so. What is about the great thing about the movie is that you totally feel for this guy, even though he's just a complete scumbag. Totally feel for him. And then at the end, when he starts laughing and he's like, "I'm okay," it's like he had it coming. You know, you feel bad for yourself for a little bit. It's like when I got sentenced, I feel horrible. I felt horrible. It was the worst ever. Oh my god! But eventually, you start to realize. How bad can I feel? I had this coming. Unless you're just delusional and you bitch and moan the whole fucking night. I can't tell you how many guys I've listened to who've committed just tons of crimes and just complained about how much, oh, I got too much time. They should have, they could have given me probation. You stole six million dollars. I ain't getting fucking probation. So same thing with this guy. You just got ripped off. You've been ripping people off forever and you just got ripped off and you got what was coming to you. So, great thing is they do a whole they, they do this whole thing, totally build them up. It was just amazing. The movie is one of the best fucking con man movies ever, ever. It's a con man gets con. It's, it's a con man that gets con. Those are the best. Those are the best. Do you have any? Do what words of wisdom? This happening. Uh, to what? To someone you know? Who me? Yeah. No, I, I mean. <laughs> I mean I, don't, I mean, I, I know ends up in fucking prison, so I don't know any successful con men, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, anyway, no, I don't have any examples, any solid, good, good, solid examples. Yeah, no, but pretty much everybody always tends to get screwed over if you're a con man. That's the other great thing. His own partner con, um, screws him over. Right. Well, how upset can you be with your partner? You're a fucking criminal. You're hanging out with criminals. What would you think? There's no code. You know, fucking con man code. They're all looking out for each other. We're all buddies. You're all fucking scumbags. I'm a fucking scumbag. If something bad happens to me because of, because of me, I mean, I fuck. What am I supposed to say? I got hit. So anyway, uh, great fucking, great, sorry. I got to stop cussing so much. It's horrible. And there's a gnat in here. Anyway, 
Matchstick Men, great movie. And uh, that's, that's it. But listen, here's what I need. I subscribe, even if you didn't like the video, let's be honest. Okay, subscribe to the channel, watch the, listen, the algorithm apparently loves it if you watch the video multiple times. Watch the video multiple times. Let the, I'm not saying let the commercials run because that's how we get monetized. That would be wrong. And it would be, it would be, um, you know, it, it wouldn't be honest. So I'm not suggesting you do that. I'm saying by watching the commercials, we get monetized. Anyway, multiple times, send it to your friends, subscribe, share the link, friends, family, hit the like button, leave a fucking comment.